If you're like me and heavily rely on the Arch user repository, you may have noticed that after a recent system update, a bunch of random packages couldn't be installed and couldn't be updated. And from the outside, it really did seem random and not consistent whatsoever. You had things like the app image launcher, but also YNGE. These don't really share any commonalities, but it turns out they do. Most computer issues aren't really random, there is something linking them. So this issue was reported over on the Arch Linux bug tracker. Handling of git submodules in package builds broken as of git 2.38.1. All of these packages affected made use of git submodules. For my personal projects, I've never really used git submodules, but what they do is basically let you embed a project inside of another project. So perhaps it's a library that a third party developed or that you're developing separately and using in multiple parent projects. I don't really know why you wouldn't have it in like a separate repo, but either way, this is what they do. And this is going to be really rare for me. A problem on Arch that I'm not going to blame the Arch team for, and I'm not going to say they made some sort of giant mistake. I'm not even going to say that Git made a mistake because this is something that basically had to be changed. So because of security related changes in Git 2.38.1, see this link right here, I'll go to it in just a moment, the way that make package interacts with Git repositories with submodules, the cloning method, is no longer functional. Now this bit right here isn't exactly accurate, but I'll get into that in just a moment. So this change was announced over in the kernel mailing list. And the culprit for this bug, regression, whatever you want to call it, is patching CVE 2022-39253. When relying on the dash dash local clone optimization, Git dereferences symbolic links in the source repository before creating hard links or copies of the dereference link in the destination repository. This can lead to surprising behavior where arbitrary files are present in a repository's git dir when cloning from a malicious repository. Git will no longer dereference symbolic links via the local clone mechanism and will instead refuse to clone repositories that have symbolic links present in the git dir slash objects directory. Additionally, the value of protocol.file.allow is changed to user by default. So that may have made no sense whatsoever, but the result of patching this and disabling this local cloning by default is if you make use of git submodules in the way they're being used in the AUR, it fails to clone and you can't build the package. So let's consider a real world package build like app image launcher. This is the package build before they actually went and patched it. Also, App Image Launcher makes use of a bunch of different Git submodules, but it doesn't really matter how many it has, it works the exact same way with one or with 1000. So, firstly, we initialize our Git submodule. This is basically the same thing as initializing a regular repo. And then inside of that submodule, we have to configure where the code can actually be found. Now, in many cases, like with a regular repo, this might be on some remote server somewhere, but it doesn't have to be remote. It can also be found locally on your hard drive. And that's exactly what is being done. And then once those have been assigned, then we do a git submodule update, which basically just pulls in the latest version of the code like it would with a regular update. And this isn't some sort of mistake and shouldn't be like this. This is exactly what Arch Linux recommends doing over on the Arch Linux wiki. Now this does still need to be updated, but for the longest time, this is what the recommended behavior was. So the way that submodules work in an AUR package is a bit different from the way you might expect them to work. So building an AUR package should be able to happen completely offline. So all of these things that are made into submodules from a local directory are all being pulled down separately before the package is actually being built. So this right here, for example, app image update is this submodule right here. And by doing this update, you are cloning code from a local directory, which is exactly what this stops you from doing. Now the Arch team could very well say, okay, going forward, you're allowed to have an internet connection at least inside of your prepare function, but they really don't want to do that. And I don't really think they should go and make that change because 
Sure, Arch likes to hang on to a lot of things that you don't really need to hang on to, like, you know, fitting your ISO on a CD, for example. But in this case, offline building can be really useful. For whatever reason, you want to go and download all your packages and then build them offline. Let's say you have an air gap system or you want to just migrate everything somewhere else. Not needing an internet connection to do everything on your system can be useful. Now, when Foxbron, who have had my fair share of disagreements, says this isn't really a make package bug, all package builds using Git submodules do that individually without any help from make package. What you really want is documentation updates to how Art should be packaging stuff with Git submodules. He is entirely right. But the guy who made the bug report didn't think that was the actual issue. Isn't it the case that the issue only occurs because some cloning method make package users for the purpose of efficiency? What cloning method does make package use for efficiency? It just issues git clone on the source if it's a git repository. I had a quick look at git.sh.in in libmake package sources. I think the issue is the use of the dash s dash dash shared flag for the cloning operation in extract underscore git. Git man page lists its usage as potentially dangerous. I'm guessing because behind the scenes, it uses the local cloning mechanism that makes the change of that git config default problematic. I'm not a git expert though. And then realized very quickly, I've done some tests and it seems like the dash s flag is unrelated. It is on Arch to update the documentation and make sure it's in line with the current packaging standards, but ultimately, at the end of the day, it is on the individual packages to actually go and fix the problem. And luckily, the solution is pretty straightforward. Before anyone worked it out in the actual Arch Linux bug report, someone over on the Arch Linux wiki had already worked out what they need to do. Now, initially, people were thinking, just go and change the global protocol.file.allow setting. This is that setting that is now defaulting to user. And what they're doing is changing it over to always. But this isn't really viable for every single package. You can't just have random packages changing your global Git settings. But if you just want to completely ignore the problem and the fact that any of the packages were broken, if you set this, then any of the packages that were doing it in the old way are going to keep working and any packages that are doing it in the new way are gonna work as well. So the new way is instead of doing that globally, you can set that individually based on the repo. So what you do is a dash C or dash dash config protocol.file.allow equals always and then submodule update and it works just fine. Now the single issue with enabling it globally is you're effectively enabling the CV as well. Now how big of a deal that really is I don't really know. I don't know of any projects that are exploiting local cloning to actually do something malicious, but it can certainly be done. So if the package builder set all of the submodules to local references in Sourcester, the attack is not really possible. And that is what is being done inside of here. So here it can't really be exploited. But if the submodules are as set by upstream, then you're relying on the commit being pinned in the package build and the maintainer monitoring the submodules. The package build would also need to allow the data, which has been copied from outside Sourcester and is now available inside it to be exploited. I guess I don't really understand the deal with that vulnerability anyway. Is the exfiltration accomplished via pushing to a git repo by someone who hasn't realized the submodules were defined maliciously? If that is the case, the whole thing isn't really relevant to Pac-Man anyway, other than the config change necessitating updating the package builds. Pac-Man only pulls from Git repositories, it never pushes, does it? And yeah, it never pushes, it's not really relevant to Pac-Man or make package whatsoever. It is an issue that got changed in Git itself that just happened to affect Arch. And this slight modification to the submodule update line is basically the accepted change that nobody has added into the wiki yet. So packages like App Image Launcher, for example, have already gone and made those changes and made it so it's not really an issue for their users anymore. And any packages that haven't made those changes are probably getting comments telling them to make the changes. Now, for the record, Git 2.38.1 is not the only affected version. It is also affecting 
and 2.37.4. But none of these versions matter at all for Arch Linux. This is the only one inside of the repo. I know this problem got addressed in a fairly quick fashion, but I'm kind of surprised that nobody else really talked about it. It broke a bunch of packages, and there certainly are comments over on the AUR in those packages, but outside of that, I didn't know this was happening until someone sent me an email about it. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Were any of your packages affected? Were any of the packages you use affected? Or did you just not even realize a problem was actually occurring? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm gonna go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, start in Libera Pay, linked down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's gonna be it for me, and I'm out.